It's feeling time. And if you are a cat parent, you know that choosing the right food for our cats can be overwhelming. Most of us cat parents treat our cats as a member of the family. And because of that, feeding is extremely important. Well, today I'm gonna show you what I've been feeding Mia for the last two months and the results have been amazing. Let's work. Like eight months ago, Mia started having stomach issues for no apparent reason. Her stool was smelling very bad, I'm not gonna enter into much detail. But something was clearly off. That made me start investigating about food allergies, food intolerance, and non-conventional methods to feed your cat. Today, I want to share with you what I've learned and what I'm feeding Mia after all my research. I'm going to divide this video in four parts. The AAFCO statement, complete and balanced food, processed foods, either wet or given, the trend right now, raw food, and I would really recommend I recommend you to watch until the very end of the video because at the end of the video I'm going to share with you what I've been feeling Mia and the results have been amazing. Let's rewind. Let's start from the beginning. What does complete and balanced food even mean? Simply it means it meets the latest scientific standards. It is important because a too low or a too high level of micronutrients or even more important macronutrients, protein and carbs can have a massive impact on the health of our pets. The standards include minimum level of protein, minimum and maximum level of total fat, minimums and sometimes maximums of other essential amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients such as choline and for cats, taurine. Note that there are no standards for carbohydrates because they are not even necessary for our cats. While American and European standards are very similar when it comes to minimum requirement, they differ in maximums and legal limits, with the European standards providing limits to more nutrients than the American standards. In the US, the standard is AAFCO and in Europe FEDIAF. Every food we feed our cats should be following nutrient standards. The way we have to know if it does is because the label will say something like formulated to meet the nutritional levels established by the organization of your country. I see I see a hand in the back. Yes? Yes, you, you can go check your cat's food, you can pause the video and, and come back whenever you're done. No, really. If you want to pause the video and go check your cat's food, you can do it now. I promise I'll be here when you come back. As I have no formal training in cat nutrition, I had to go to the experts. And I want to share with you two things before we go deep into the topic. Googling stuff, it's not doing research. It's called confirmation bias. Google's algorithm, by default, serves you the content that you want to read. So if you search, is raw food good for cats? You will certainly find articles matching the opinion that you already have. Same goes with, is raw food bad for cats? To really get an unbiased opinion, we need to go to research with medical evidence. Which takes me to the second point. To create medical evidence, there must first be an understanding of the types of research that exist. Case control studies identifies patients that have an outcome of interest and patients without the same outcome. A case series is an examination of series of patients with the desired outcome. There is no control group in this case. A randomized controlled clinical trial involves participants that are randomly allocated in an experimental group or a control group, followed by assessing the outcome of interest. And finally, a systematic review or meta-analysis that creates a summary of the medical history. These studies are treated as evidence levels from 1 being very high, when several studies lead to the same conclusions, to 5, which include an expert's opinion without explicit clinical appraisal. There are no high evidence published studies, meaning 1, 2 or 3, talking about the benefits or the risks of feeding your cat raw meat, which means that there is very little we know about this kind of diet. I will link in the description box down below all the articles and studies that I read to form my opinion, and if you are an avid reader, I would recommend you do that as well. Kibble. Is it bad? Well, are cookies bad? Then the average cat needs around 250 calories per day. Then as cat people, our job is to find the most nutritional way to feed 250 calories per day to our cats. Arr. When it comes to how much to feed our cats, you should make your decision based on your cat individual needs. Along with your lifestyle and budget, you want to make a wise decision because your cat's long-term health depends on it and you want to avoid the necessary risk or lead your cat to being over. Today, I want to share with you some of the learnings I got from the information I was able to gather. Premium kibbles are loaded with carbohydrates, commonly soy, wheat, rice, corn, curly, potatoes, tapioca, starch, to serve as sources of energy and calories. An estimated 60% of US cats are considered overweight. Reason being, 
Poor nutrition, especially when free fat. Our based diets can disrupt the signaling of hormones like insulin and leptin, which help control appetite and avoid overeating. Also, these carbohydrates have a very high glycemic index, which basically ranks how quickly and how high the sugar level in blood spikes after eating a certain food. You're disrupting our YouTube video. Put the wrong kind of fuel in a high performance engine long enough, and you're gonna ruin that engine. Finally, oftentimes, premium kibble are very low on animal protein levels. And let's just remember that cats are obligate carnivores. Veterinarian Claudia A. Kerr states that natural prey of cats contain at least 55% of protein, 45% of fat, and very little carbohydrate, around 1 or 2% on a dry matter base. Dry food ranges between 20 to 50% carbohydrate. If the cat only needs 1 to 2%, why does kibble make that nutrient almost half of their diet? According to Dr. Lisa Pearson, cats have no dietary needs for carbohydrates. And more worrisome is the fact that a high carbohydrate diet can become a health issue for our cats. Premium kibbles are processed with high heat and pressure that destroys many micronutrients that the ingredients once contained. And the same thing happens with wet food. They use mostly synthetic minerals and vitamins to replace the micronutrients that are lost in the preserving process. And because wet food and dry food lose most of their flavor during the cooking process, then they also contain flavor enhancers sweeteners, and other chemicals and preservatives. Dry kibble is popular among many cat owners because it's convenient. It comes in large bags and because their moisture content is only 20%, it lasts longer, even after opening. Another benefit of dry kibble is that because the moisture level is so low, there's less risk of bacterial growth and you can just leave it out if you're at work or outside for a few hours. And finally, yes, it's cheap. What's raw food? A raw food diet usually includes muscle meat, organ, and crown bone. The most common meats included in raw food are chicken, turkey, fish, and eggs. But other meats can also be included. Raw food has, in general, not gone through a processing facility, and thus, it's closer to what your cat would find in nature, with its pros and its cons. And raw food is very trendy right now, and there are many cat people that are starting to feed that to their cats. But is it good for them? A recent study analyzed 240 samples of 20 commercialized raw food brands and found that 6% of those samples came positive for salmonella, which none of the commercial brands do. If your cat is young or very old or has a chronic disease or an immunodeficiency, raw foods can be dangerous for them because now, on top of dealing with their illness or their geriatric or pediatric state, they must fight those organisms present in the raw food. Many veterinarians won't recommend raw food, either for the risk of lacking nutrients that our cat needs or the health risks inherent on feeding a raw food diet. One thing is clear, if you go for raw food, I would recommend you go for a commercialized brand that's formulated by veterinarians and follows the standards of your country. Since our cats are obligate carnivores, their digestive systems are designed to especially thrive with meat-based diets. Cats' digestive tract is short and moves flesh and bones quickly, which protects them from bacteria that the raw meat might contain. Also, as the gut is very acidic, with a pH of 1.5 to 2, it kills bacteria. Because their digestive tract is designed for raw food, their stool is going to be smaller and less smelly, which doesn't happen with kibble or wet food, because they contain loads of carbohydrates that our cats are not good at processing, and therefore all that goes to waste. Finally, cats have their origins in areas with very little water, and their thirst drive is very low. As they've evolved to receive their water intake, from the food they eat, and it becomes a lot easier with raw diet or canned food. I am very happy that you made it to here. Today's video is packed with a lot of information. If you are liking it, it took a while to put all this together, so give this video a thumbs up to tell the YouTube algorithm that this video is worth watching. The tough reality is that because raw meat is very new and the companies that sell raw meat are very small, there's very little research supporting that feeding your cat raw meat is beneficial for them. As I mentioned earlier, Mia was having digestive issues and I tried everything commercially available, including very expensive, prescription-only veterinarian food, and none of that seemed to work. So after all this test and learn, I decided to give a shot to raw food. I've been adding a little raw in her wet food in every single meal, around 25%, and Mia is doing great. Her stool is more consistent, it smells no. less, she is extremely active and looking very healthy. So I'm most likely going to no. keep doing that and even increasing the amount of raw I put in every meal. Yeah. 
there's this brand, Darwin's, that ships raw food to your door. And it's cheaper than the wet food that I was feeding Mia. They have now a 50% discount for first time buyers and they are following all the regulations from the AAFCO that I was mentioning earlier. I've added the promotional link in the description box down below so you can join us if you want to transition to raw food. Manipulating raw beef comes with risks and according to the studies that I went through, transitioning your cat to a raw meat diet can become riskier for a household. So if you decide to join us on the raw journey, make sure you put systems in place to prevent cross-contamination. Like washing your hands and washing the utensils that you're using, like it's not nothing crazy. I'm going to keep updating you on how the process go, but so far, I'm super happy with it. If you want to take the bond with your cat to the next level, make sure you watch this video next. And that's it for today. See you outdoors.